letterpress? Isn't that one of those super old printing press things? He's really taking on another one of those crazy projects? Yes, yes, and yes, it's going to be a lot of fun. I was first introduced to the art of letterpress a few years back. In fact, I was actually down in New York City, about to go to a Maker Faire down there, and I just so happened to come across a video Jimmy DeResta and Laura Kampf had put out the week before. Halfway through, Jimmy starts using this crazy machine to print little pieces of paper, and my jaw dropped. Whoa. Since then, I haven't been able to stop watching these magical machines and seeing what people make with them. I now follow many, many printing YouTube channels. I even got a chance to tour a local printing shop, see some presses in person, and meet some experts. I was this close to buying a press myself, until I looked at the price, and how much they weigh. So I'm going to do the next best thing. I'm going to build a model. For the past six months, in the background, I've been slowly researching my press of choice, a Chandler and Price new style. It has a mesmerizing mechanism involving gears, cams, linkages, and more, but it seemed like something I could probably build. The devil's in the details, though. I've had a very hard time finding any dimension mechanical drawings in the press online anywhere. Someday, maybe I'll go into the process more, but I've literally spent at this point days of my life trying to get this thing working. I'll include both the model itself, as well as the resources that go along with it in the description if you'd like to take a look. They're pretty neat. The first task, and what I'll be spending the rest of this video working on, is making an imprecise prototype of this CAD model in the real world, so I can validate all the pieces fit together properly and all the dimensions are correct. Off camera, I've exported all the pieces in the model into a set of templates I can print out. Most of the sheets have multiple pieces on them, so I'll cut each out roughly with scissors. A few of the parts were too big to fit onto a single sheet, so I'll have to tape a few sheets together. Anticipating this, I gave myself some marks that I can use for alignment. I'm going to be making this prototype mostly out of foam core. Here's the big sheet I'll be starting with. There's only one problem. I've based a good portion of the model around quarter inch thick plate, but this foam core isn't quite that thick. In order to ensure that the pieces are the right thickness in the few places where it matters, I'll later on be building up areas in the foam core with some cardstock. But I'm getting a little ahead of myself. Let's get back to the task at hand. To attach each template to the foam core, I'll use spray adhesive. Once attached, I'll cut each out with an X-Acto knife. And here's the first finished piece. Now I just need to cut out all the rest of them. Okay, now it's time for the cardstock. Working around a number of the features of the parts, I'll cut out a bunch of thin washer-shaped pieces of cardstock.
then I'll adhere them to the original piece. Problem solved. The foam core piece is now just about exactly a quarter inch thick. A few special pieces need to be cut from thicker half inch foam core material. These parts, the roller frames, are a great example of some of these. Just like the other templates, I'll apply glue, stick them on, and cut them out. Lastly, a few parts have complicated geometries that I won't be able to easily replicate without stacking multiple layers of material. I'll start out by using the existing template to cut out the complicated bit of each part's geometry. The bulk of the thickness though I'll get from some thicker pink insulation foam. I'll trace out a circle that's the right size and cut it out. Finally, I'll use some spray adhesive to bond the two layers together. And here's a sneak peek of what's to come. Before that though, we need to talk dowels. For the prototype, I'll be using dowels instead of real metal rods to hold the whole structure together. There are three main sizes in the CAD model. 3 8 inch, 5 8 inch, and 1 and a half inch. There's only one problem. It turns out it's really, really hard to find 1 and a half inch dowels anywhere. So, I bought the next size up, a 2 inch dowel, and we'll have to turn it down on the lathe. The final piece needs to be 14 inches long, so I'll cut the blank at 16 inches to give myself some extra slot later on. Time for the lathe! I'll chuck the dowel into my three jaw chuck. On the other end, I'll use a live center in the tailstock. Yeah, that looks to be roughly centered. Let's turn up the speed and get to turning. I started out by hand feeding each pass, mostly because I wanted to get a feel of what sort of depth of cut and feed rate would be appropriate. Later on, I switched to the auto feed. A 
Eventually, I switched over to sandpaper to remove the final 20 thousandths or so of material. A small, unmachined bit remained at the end, so I'll cut that off. Good thing I gave myself the extra tolerance. And with that, all the parts were complete. It's finally time to put the prototype together. So, for what it is, I'm super impressed with this thing. It's not all that precise, but remember, the goal of this prototype is to make sure the whole mechanism works in the real world. Precision will come later in the real version. Let me show you how this thing works. First of all, ink is smeared onto the top disc. On each side of the disc, there's a pair of brackets that on the real press would hold rollers. As the press advances, these rollers pick up ink off of the top ink disc and progress downwards toward the printing plate. The rollers then pass over the printing plate. Imagine it where the green tape is located. This inks up the plate for an impression. On the other end, the operator would load a piece of paper onto the platen, and at just the right time, it rotates to be in line with the printing plate. Finally, at the end of the stroke, the inked plate and the paper on the platen meet, resulting in a final print. Then the platen resets back and the whole process starts over again. Anyway, I'm super glad I made this prototype. Along the way, I found some bugs in my CAD model, so it was great to figure this out and fix them when I could. A few include the platen mechanism having way too much slop, the whole bottom needing significantly more reinforcement, and the platen not being able to move fluidly due to interference with the bolt. With the prototype mostly out of the way, next time I'm going to start making this thing out of metal. Easy.